Hey everybody, aloha, shalom. I hope you're having a good day. So this is Kaneki. I come in the name of the Lord, and this is going to be the second video concerning the t signs of the times today, especially when it comes to uh, the family of God, the Christians, the Jews, believers in Christ, Hebrews, Gentiles, Israelites, any of the people that are kind of confused about what is going on right now and kind of in need of some type of peace right and what i come presenting is the second part of the video that was about the divisions right and how if we are divided a can a kingdom cannot stand but divisions might have made more sense and in fact has shown that through the new testament which is the testimony of jesus christ which is the spirit of prophecy as we all know it has shown us that division was inevitable and something that was warranted during a time that might be today. So, with this question was, the stone the builders rejected had become the capstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. This, is, this question mark is a confounding question mark. It's like, what, that doesn't make any sense. Don't you want us to be together? But now that it's rejected by one group, and because of that, it has become the corner, the finalizing of another group. The, this was done on purpose, and it's we're supposed to be in praise of it. Is that right? That's what that means, right? So instead of confoundment to this division, try and put your percepts as one mind and be more mystified. Be in curiosity about what the mystery of God is going to reveal as the Holy Spirit works in throughout the whole entire family. So as you know that there's a time and place for everything and it's very wise and it takes a spirit of discernment to know when that time is and right now is the time to repair. In copacetic divisions. Now copacetic that means we are going to be working as a team it's going to be passive and divisions are going to be little sectors of groups within an entire body. We all share one eyeball, one vision, but the division is going to be within the entirety like of the kingdom. You're going to be also in management of your own little houses or sectors within that. And even within that, as you go on towards the end of the age, you're, we're still going to be working in unison, but there's going to be an understanding that it's okay that you're over there and it's okay that we're over here because this is not a divide. We're, di we're in divisions so that when the time comes, everything can be copacetic and the body of Christ, the body of God, will be ready for the bridegroom. So on this note, for copacetic divisions within the entirety of the family of God, I want to go on John 17, 1 through 24. With this video, I'm just going to go through um, 1 through 12, okay? And with this, vi what I figure this entire chapter is, is the prayer of the Son of Man to God. Now, Jesus Christ was here and he kept saying he's doing the work of his father, right? He's here because he's on a mission. He's here because he's on contract. He's here because he had promised to do something. He was under oath and once again, God had made an oath and covenant. They were making a deal, right? And so within this prayer, since he had accomplished everything that he had been told and was on the last leg before the crucifixion and resurrection and the guarantee, yeah? He, in this prayer, was making a grant. And this grant was to God. So in verses 1 through 5, he prays for himself as the Son to the Father. This is so that he could be glorified. And in this glorification, that he could um, then ask his Father for more authority in the grant, right? Through 6 through 19, he prays for his people, not all people, his people. And when he says his, he's talking about Jesus Christ himself, the Son of Man. And these are going to be the disciples, the newbies, the Gentiles, right? And 
in uh, verses 20 to 24, he prays for all believers. And this right here will fall the people of God as well. Okay? So this right here is a separation, and this is going to be called the New Testament. And this is what um, is the a new division, if you may, right? So if you go through verses 1 through 5, when Jesus prays for himself, it was to be glorified and granted by the true God to be the glory of God, right? So in verse 1, he says, Father. He starts with Father, okay? The time has come. Glorify your Son that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, eternal life, they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Now, this, this is an important part so that they can justify that Christ himself is the head of the entirety of the body. Because when he first starts, he says, Father... The time has come to glorify your son, your son, him, okay? This right here is Jesus, the man. He is talking to the father on behalf of the son. He is, and in this sense, he is uh, awakening, pretty much, the father that the, a grant is about to be made, right? For you granted him authority over all people right and this is where it changes this is going to be the the um the fact that this is what jesus christ did the son of god did he he let them know what eternal life is that they may know you the only true god true god not just the only god the only true god and jesus christ both names right jesus christ whom you have sent the next verse is i that right there, when it said, I, he is now talking as the son of man, which means that it was granted. Because he wouldn't be able to say I unless it wasn't grant unless it was granted by the father, who is the true God, right? Now, as the son of man, he is saying, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. So now he's saying, I've done it. Now I want to have a little bit of grants here. Yeah. Now glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. And this right here is him saying, I want to be at the head with you in your glory. So when that happened, right, and the grants were all made for the son of man in the prayer, okay, Jesus calling on the father for his son, right? By the prayer... Jesus made to the Father, it was answered when Jesus changed your son, him, to verses 4 and 5, yeah? I, me, glorify me, 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 I. So he was talking in first person. And what it was, was there was the Father, then the true God, and the Father. And there's a very, uh, there's a very important detail here between the two fathers and the true God. Why he didn't just say God, right? The Son glorified by God, and it is granted, because he was able to say, I, me, and glorify me, which therefore means that Christ is the head of the entirety of the body. Yeah? So that's step one. The next section is going to be uh, 6 through 12, which is going to be when, he, when Jesus prays for his disciples, okay? With this, it's going to be the prayer is continuing on as the Son. Okay? As the Son to the Father. And it says, I have revealed you to those you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, 
but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer. Out they are still in, oh, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. So this is sharing in power. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture could be fulfilled. So this whole thing was for the 12 disciples and, and those found within the blessing. With this right here, yeah, you have to understand through 6 through 12, the prayer is specifically for the disciples, the new ones, right? For the New Testament. The disciples, everything Jesus Christ has came from the Father. This is what they knew. Yeah? And Jesus Christ came from the Father and that the Father sent his Son. Those given are from the Father to the Son. Father and Son are one. So all I have is yours. All you have is mine. And through the disciples, glory came to the Son of God. Holy Father, grant protection to disciples with the name of Jesus Christ. That's the name that he gave him, right? So they may be one as we are one. And that's in sharing in the power of, the, of being in the head, okay? Disciples granted a permanent place in the head of Christ so that they were also glorified, okay? Because the head of Christ is going to be in the glory of God and not everyone can be in the glory of God because it is an all-consuming fire, right? So in this sense, these disciples, it says also that Christ, Jesus Christ told the disciples as well that you will be ruling with me um, to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. And in this sense comes the prophecy fulfilled that says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. With the disciples being in the New Testament would be the last testament, yeah, opposed to the original people of God, not the true God, but God. They have now become first. And the people, the Israelites and all the people who haven't um, justified themselves with Christ at the heart are going to be last. So with those two sectionings, we now understand that Christ is the head of the body and the new disciples, his 12, are also going to be glorified in the head with the body. I'll continue on with the next phase of what Jesus Christ prayed um, his disciples into a little bit more power or authority, I should say, and then continue on with the rest of the body and the feet and then I'm going to reveal the bride of Christ so I hope that made sense and that we could all accord in the mystification of the truth as it is revealed to us